there's a second way to estimate your uncollectibles, and that's by looking at your accounts receivable rather than your sales. That's what this presentation will discuss. That takes us to the percent of receivables method. This is just another way to look at it. Instead of saying that about 2% of all my sales won't be paid, I actually go through and either look at my accounts receivable and see which accounts I think will go bad, or again, I can just estimate based on my accounts receivable. Since these are only the people that still owe me at the end of the year, I'll usually have a higher percentage. If you think about percent of sales, some of those people have already paid you, so you know they're good, so you use a rather small percentage there. But for accounts receivable, I'm going to say that 10% of my accounts receivable are uncollected. In the first year, I'm going to use those same accounts, bad debt expense, 10% of 30,000, my accounts receivable is 3,000. And that good old allowance account is always the credit, and that's for 3,000. Don't get messed up on the accounts. Those are always the same. It's the computation of the amount that differs. To show that, then we'll do the same thing. Accounts receivable, less our allowance, gives you your net accounts receivable. And in this case, it will be a different number. It's 27,000 because I estimated it a different way. So hopefully you understand the concept because I'm now going to add one more thing that's going to make your life miserable. But it's very seldom that this is your first year in operation. And so if second year or any year after that, then you need to know what the beginning balance is in order to figure out your adjusting journal entry. So let's say we have a $3,000 credit balance in the allowance account. Our year-end balance in our accounts receivable is $70,000. And I still estimate 10% of my accounts receivable. So if you think about it, what I'm doing here is 10% of my accounts receivable, or $70,000, I really truly, of those 7,000, 70,000, I think 7,000 are going to go bad. That means the ending balance in that allowance account really should be 7,000. So that's what I think the ending balance should be. So my net accounts receivable, if you want to think it that way, should be 63. I'm thinking I'll collect 63,000 of that 70. So if you know that, what should your adjustment be? Again, don't get mixed up on the accounts, still bad debt expense, but I started with three, I want it up to seven, so my adjustment has to be for 4,000. Still the allowance for bad debts, still for the 4,000. So uh, with if you're looking at the receivables, when you do your computation, you come up with the ending balance, and then you have to figure out what your adjustment needs to be. And an easy is through T accounts. So the example we just went through, we have a beginning balance of three. We know it has to be seven. So we know our adjustment has to be four. Sometimes, the allowance account actually can flip sides on you, and we'll see how that can happen in a second. So it would be possible that you're starting with a beginning balance of 5,000, but a debit balance in the allowance account. I do my 10% of 70. I know I want 7,000 in the credit side, and you'll always want the allowance to be at the credit side as you begin your year. And so to get from one to the other, now I've got to put 12,000 in here because 12 credit minus 5 debit gives me my 7 credit. So that seems right. So my adjusting journal entry, same accounts, but my adjusting journal entry would be 12. So you can see that's the little wrinkle you'll see in almost all your problems because that's make, what makes all this fun. So in summary, the two methods, percent of sales, easy peasy. Do your computation, whatever percent they tell you of sales, make that your journal entry. If you see percent of receivables, if you see the word receivables in there, percent of receivables or aging of receivables, then 
what you're finding out is what the ending balance in the allowance account should be. Um, so you're basically figuring out how much of your receivables are going to go bad. So then you have to use that T account to figure out the amount of the journal entry. If you've watched these in order, you've already heard about writing off an account, so I'm going to go over that very quickly. All we're going to do here is reduce the accounts receivable by the amount we're not going to collect and reduce the allowance for bad debts because we already accounted for $80 of that. The main thing is it doesn't make any difference which method you use to estimate your allowance, you'll write it off exactly the same way. Return, practice, practice, practice. It's easier than it looks.